Hello, this is Rashid. Uh, welcome to another video. Today, I want to take a little bit higher step and want to explain you some of the things um, at uh, combinational circuits that we have been studying. So let's look into this one first before we go into abstraction level. What typically, so far what we did, we, uh, we look into gates we created combinational circuits and then we simplified them or you can say we optimized them a little bit now how that happens actually somebody who is brand new might be asking okay rashid we have gates we can create connect them together to create some real circuits but how is that done typically when we want to create a chip so want to spend a little bit of time there and want to give an idea of standard cell library and netlist and gates. Hopefully that will create a good base for our physical design uh, video series later on. Combinational circuits. So far we have, I, I look at N and exclusive R inverter type of gates. In next level, we will look into that abstraction as well. We look into priority encoder. You can create multiplexer or you can create other higher level combination circuits. You, where you think of, initially you, I mean, those circuits are composed of gates. But once you create a multiplexer, And we will look into that example how we can create a multiplexer once we create a multiplexer and other some basic building blocks then we can more think of multiplexers as opposed to thinking in terms of gates decoders alu adders multipliers and we will look into that so far i covered logic logic gates or logical operations but I will also do a couple of videos on adders, multipliers, because those are other sort of uh, arithmetic combination circuits. So once you have those built-in blocks, then you think more on those at that level, as opposed to thinking always as NAND or AND or NOT or R or inverter. What you do, you write those building blocks in an HDL hardware description language like, like Verilog, VHDL or System Verilog. Once you have Verilog or System Verilog, you give that to a gate level synthesis tool like Design Compiler in Synopsis. What that tool does is that tool will take the RTL and convert that bigger building blocks into an optimized netlist. The netlist is all it is, is it is a format of file. It's, it's pretty much format like a Verilog, but instead of having a bigger components, it, it only has gates and their interconnection. And where that data comes from, like gate level synthesis tool, how does that know what are the basic gates uh, that I can, I need to translate that RTL into. And those basic gates are defined in standard cell library. The basic gates can be a lot. Typically, uh, this standard cell library can have few thousand of the cells. Like they can have NAND, NOD, inverter, and or exclusive R. I have so far not touched on sequential circle like latches, flip flops, and all that, but we'll look into them. This library even has multiplexers, very optimized multiplexer that it can directly put that into a multiplexer as opposed to putting everything as NAND and NOD. So this is really your key lower level in physical design that you want do you stay at you don't look into transistor level your basic level the the bottom level that you will look into will be a standard cell we will later on look into the timing of 
each of these and then you I will then I will look into further into standard cell library giving you an example how standard cell library is what's the format how delay transition times and all that but the whole timing discussion will come later on in this video I just want to give you an idea of okay there is a standard cell library which has gates of standard cells and there could be variants and there could be different type of NAND gates slower faster bigger smaller and all that information is given to the synthesis tool synthesis tool what i'm not sharing here intentionally it has timing floor plan uh, sorry timing area power constraints and using those constraints it can pick different cells from this library and create an optimized net list that meets your constraint that's really the job of a synthesis level two. These gates, when we receive them, then later in physical design, we place them, we route them, means we create a layout for it. We do a lot of verification on that, and eventually we convert that into through PD physical design remaining steps. And then we create a GDS file, which is a special format, which is what we send to Fab. Fab manufactures them and it takes can take two to three months. One, two, three months, maybe I should say. And then they come back with your chip comes, which is further verified. Just wanted to give you a higher level so you know where we are right now. And that takes us to the abstraction level. As I mentioned, we so far have been discussing gates. In gates, we only discuss combinational gates. Combinational, sorry, we discussed gates and we discussed combinational circuits here. We haven't discussed sequential circuits, but I really want to take you through the entire cycle on combinational circuit first before we look into sequential. So different abstraction level. The beauty of abstraction level is when you are at a much higher level, architecture level, you're not talking about transistors. You talk about transistors here and maybe here. When you create gates, you're really talking about what kind of transistor are inside, how you can optimize transistor sizes, their interconnection, to create an optimum netlist or gates. As, as I just previously mentioned, these gates are created in a standard cell library and a synthesis tool converts that into a netlist. So we have at the very bottom, a transistor and their interconnection. The next level, and these are really more like an abstract. These are, um, um, th th there is definitely a separation. I mean, the gate that we have has a transistor inside. So it's not like there is a natural separation there. But just to think of it, to plan it, to design it, to verify things. Once your transistors and interconnectors are in good shape, you create gates. Once your gates are, you create gates, you verify them, you optimize them, you're done with gates. Then you go to the next level. You build building blocks like multiplexing, like decoders like ALU, adders, multipliers, flip-flops, latches. Those are your bigger building blocks and you code them in RTL. Then another level is the interconnection of those building blocks that you created here. You have adder, multiplier, ALU, multiplexers, flip-flops, memories. And here you're talking about interconnection of them to create a microarchitecture, a particular implementation, and then another level up, you have architecture. Architecture can be like, in, if we talk about a computer architecture, we, it could be an Intel instructions, ARM instructions, RISC instruction, MIPS instruction. So you are talking about instructions at that level, different adder, multiplier, move, store, 
all kind of special instruction that you create your computer architecture file. This is just instructions. Here you talk about how you're going to implement those instructions and that is a micro architecture. And once you have micro architecture, then you go into individual blocks. So I thought giving you an idea of this one will, will definitely help you to see the bigger picture where we are. What we, what my plan to cover is, I started with gates and then I went into combinational gates, sorry, combinational circuits. I'm, I, I just finished gates and, I'll, and I, I even touched on some of the building blocks, but I will create more building blocks. Next videos after that, I will go into, I'm not an article person. I did article design before and as a physical design person, I believe it's important that you understand some of the constructs of a Verilog, system Verilog or VHDL, any HDL language. It's important because your goal is to convert that RTL into an optimized netlist or optimized GDS. It is important sometimes you have to look into RTL files and understand them. So having a, some good idea of Verilog is important and that's what we will look into this. After that, I will look into, okay, how I will go into transistor, uh, transistor level and how different gates are constructed with different transistor. I will look into transistor characteristics, then we'll make an inverter, then we'll make a NAND gate. And that will help you to understand what is really happening at transistor level. That understanding is vital when you're making bigger building blocks or you are even sitting on architecture level. You really know what's really happening at transistor level. Timing of the circuits I haven't touched so far because in order to understand timing, you need to understand the transistor behavior there a little bit. Again, my goal is not to take you through entire book of on, on CMOS uh, transistor level, but enough to have a decent idea when you're doing physical design, you know what's really happening under the hood. How are transistors behaving? What, what, what are the sources of capacitance, resistance, how you can increase current, how you can increase power or decrease power, how you can increase delay, decrease delay, how area will increase, decrease, what's really happening because the, the core stuff is really at transistor level and that will really help you understand timing of the circuits. Once we cover that for the combinational circuits, then I will go into sequential. And by that time, you will have a decent understanding of this entire cycle. And in sequential, I'll do the same. Uh, I will cover some of the building blocks, how we code them in RTL. And most of the things will be already covered, but I'll, some of the different aspects, how you create latches and flip-flops, um, how those are built with transistor, because that's where your understanding of setup and hold time and other things will come. So that's it for today. Hope you got a good idea of it. Any questions, let me know on LinkedIn. Thank you so much.